Welcome to the Blessed Hope. Uh, this ministry is by our family. Every night we go through a particular part of the Bible as we study. We, as a family, are inviting you into our study. That the Bible says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I do these studies with my family so they can grow in the Lord, so they can know the Lord through the Word of God, by the Word of God, of the Word of God. It's the very importance. And we invite you to listen, to share, to learn with us too, the Word of God. We ask that you uh, share these, to give full liberty of sharing to your friends, to your family. We ask that you use these videos for the edification of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you abuse not these videos. They are to work for the Lord Jesus Christ, for edification, for growth. We thank you. Revelation chapter 13 And I stood upon the sand of the sea, would be the Mediterranean, and I saw a beast rise out of the sea, Godzilla. Don't tell me Satan doesn't know this Bible. Here comes God. Godzilla always came on from the ocean. And saw a beast rise up out of the sea. And again, would be the Mediterranean. Having seven heads and ten horns. That's, again, that's power. And upon his horns, ten crowns. All right, let's jump to verse 3 of chapter 12. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. This one's in the heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. Now there are seven heads. There are ten horns. But the dragon Satan has seven crowns. The beast that came out of the sea has ten crowns. So they're not the same. Scripture with scripture. And... His heads, the name of blasphemy. So we've got Satan, we've got the beast, and we're coming up, the next one will be the false prophet in this chapter. Satan differs from the beast. Three extra crowns. And then the names of blasphemy upon his head. And the beast which I saw, John saw him, was like unto a leopard. And these are animals of the Antichrist you'll find in the Bible. He's white, yellow, and black. He matches the races that came of mankind. Now I can't say Japheth, Shem, and Ham because I don't know what color Ham was. But that is the three colors of man today. And though they have been mingled together, that is the race of man when you look at a leopard. And a leopard has little spots all over his body. That will come up at the end of this chapter. His feet were as the feet of a bear. Bears will mark trees with them paws. Men are likened to trees in the Bible. Now you wanted me to say something about Russia. No. You don't anger a bear. Unless you don't want to live long. A bear is not easy to take down with a rifle. Study bears. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Sharp teeth inside. This is the Antichrist, Daniel 7, 1 John 2 and 4, and 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. This is the characteristic of the Antichrist. And God has told us. And the dragon, Satan, so see they're not the same, gave him, the Antichrist, his power. So I guess the Antichrist would fall down and worship Satan Matthew chapter 4 and Mark chapter 4. 
and his seat. And great authority. Look at the greats in this, in this book of Revelation. So Satan has a seat and he hands it over to the Antichrist. And the power and the authority has all been vested to this Antichrist, the beast, by Satan himself. The world is now run by Satan and his ambassador, Antichrist. And I saw one of his heads, as it were wounded to death. Oh, we can go on this one forever. You see, it will be dead, but why as if? Because it's going to come back to life. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Wow, look at that. He was dead, but now he's alive and well. And they won't wonder for Jesus Christ when we preach about Jesus on the streets. He's already imitated the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the world goes, ooh, ah. Zechariah 11, 17, Psalm 68, 21, and Habakkuk 3, 13. Now the Bible says that his right hand and his head is going to be wounded by a sword. And then Matthew 24, 24, 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, Revelation 13, 11 to 13. And they, the world, worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Now wait a minute. What is the counterfeit of this? I already told you yesterday the whole world worships dragons one way or another. But this is one dragon. The dragon. When I preach on the street, what do I preach? I preach Jesus Christ died for my sins. According to scripture, he was buried and he rose again the third day according to scripture. And what did the disciples preach about that resurrection? It was the power of God. Antichrist is against Christ. Antichrist does everything that Christ done. But through the power of Satan. So what the world is doing, they're worshiping a non-Jesus Christ. By the power of Jesus Christ, that Satan has raised his prophet, his teacher, his, I'm not going to say savior. He has raised him from the dead as God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Right there. And you can see the world is more ready for the Antichrist resurrection than they are for Jesus' resurrection. And if you don't believe that, you have not been in any public ministry at all. The world stands in awe of what Satan does that God has already done. And they worship the dragon which had given power unto the beast. And they worship the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him? Well, he already killed Moses and Elijah. Remember that? Remember he, remember he rose a war against two men and they died. And they were resurrected into heaven. People looked on like, ooh, okay, ah. And the Jewish raiment started getting right. But when the Antichrist is injured and dead and resurrected, the whole world starts worshiping them, not Moses and Elijah. Because they were tormented by Moses and Elijah. You wait to see the torment, what the Antichrist is going to do by the end of this chapter. So who's going to fight the Antichrist? And there was given unto him, the Antichrist, a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. That's what's on his head, remember? And power was given unto him, the Antichrist, to continue 
Forty and two months. Notice how that three and a half years keeps showing up. We are in Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation. That seat is the mercy seat. The Antichrist walks in there and takes a seat by the power of Satan. And Mr. Ford, hey, I found the Ark of the Covenant. Will the Hollywood God please sit down and amuse the world? And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. Blasphemy his name. I think my wife said today she heard some fool speak that they were greater than God or something. And his tabernacle. That's the temple right there where the, where the Antichrist is. They are blasting that temple as, look, God, I'm sitting in your seat. The world's worshiping me. What are you going to do about it? And them that dwell in heaven. That's us. That's the end. Remember, Satan was just kicked out of heaven. He's just been put to the earth. And he's cussing us out as we are glorifying God in Jesus Christ. And he's cussing us out. He's happy that the Christians have finally got victory over him. He hates that. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. That's not Christians. He just left us. We were in heaven. He left. That's got to be Jewish people. And when the Bible speaks about saints, that are people who are doing what God has told them to do. They are well favored in the righteousness of God. There are Jewish people who are right with God. And Satan's going to make war with them. Daniel 7, 21, 24 to 25. Revelation 17, 16 and 17. The Jews better start watching out now. And to overcome... Overcome them. That's not the church age. Matthew 16, 18. To him that endureth unto the end. That's not us. That's these saints in the tribulation of the great tribulation with Satan and the Antichrist after them. God already warned us in Revelation 12. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth because Satan is now there and he's angry. And power was given him over all kindreds, all, all races, and all tongues, languages, and nations. That's the power that, that Satan offered Jesus if he would fall down and worship him. The Antichrist now has authority over the entire world. There will be no presidents. There will be no king. There will nobody be in authority but who Satan put in authority. You think that Satan and Antichrist is going to allow someone to rise up over them? You're crazy. You're crazy. And all that dwell upon the earth, all that dwell upon the earth, the globe, this planet, all. I'm not there. Shall worship him. Luke 10, 70. 30, 20, my writing's terrible, I apologize. All the world will go for Satan and the Antichrist in the tribulation period. I wish that would be all the world would go after Jesus Christ. But right now, Jesus said, many will go the broad way, few will go through the straight gate. But tribulation, all that will be in the world will worship him. The kindreds, the tongues, the nations. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So, who is not going to worship Satan? Those that overcame the saints, verse 7, those who do have their names written in the Lamb's book of life, they are after the rapture, they are in the tribulation period. So, it shows that when, Gen when Revelation 20 happens, 
There are people from the tribulation period who have their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and they will not go to the lake of fire. And they're in the tribulation period. And they will not worship Satan. And the Antichrist will be after them in war. It will be another war against Israel. Of life of the land of the land, capital L, from the foundation of the world, 1718. If any man has an ear, this is very important when Jesus says this, let him hear. You better take account what I just said. He said that for each church. You better listen to me. Church age is ending. We are at the mark of halfway through the tribulation period. What we just said, you better pay attention. I guarantee by that statement there and talking about the Jewish raiment, I guarantee some way they will get Revelation 13. They will read it. And when they come to verse 9, they're going to, oh, we better. But Rabbi, we don't believe in the New Testament. We better. Because we are saints. By the law and by the testimony of Jesus Christ, chapter 12. They will now be using the book of Revelation in Daniel to, to try to get to the endure to the end. He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. You're going to reap what you sow. Jews will be put into captivity again. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. They're going to kill Jews with swords. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now remember we saw the patience of Job spoken about in James. Job had three friends that just kept angering him. And there are three that show up here. The devil, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. And they're going to anger those Jews. And Job is 42 chapters long. And he's been diseased by Satan. And he has been left to his own by his family. His wife, his children are dead. And then when we get to the end of Job, it says, Return or something to captivity. And he got his children back by resurrection. And I beheld another beast. This is the false prophet. This is Judas. Remember Jesus said something, I can't quote it completely, but, but you know, you refuse my name, but him that cometh in his own name, you will receive him. This is probably, this is Judas. I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. This one comes out of the earth. The Antichrist came out of the Mediterranean Sea. He comes out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. Who's he imitating? Jesus Christ. Have you ever studied, oh man, I, know I said that, I forget what. Jesus Christ Superstar? You ever know who the hero was of that story? That album? It wasn't Jesus. So like a lamb, I mean he's like Jesus Christ, but he but he's not. And he spanked as a dragon. He looked like Jesus, but he spent he spoke of the de devil and Satan. Probably a cussing mouth. Probably a lion mouth, John 8, 44. Okay. Blasphemy. Murder, because we're going to see in a moment, it's going to be murdering. Well, it's just like Judas was. He went around with the other apostles acting and behaving like them. And then, yes. And then his true nature, when Satan entered him, he became a liar and a murderer. And, and the thing to that is... When Jesus said, one of you are going to betray me, he said that at the table. No one had no idea who that was. 
When he said, one of you guys here, one of you 12 is going to betray him, no one looked at Judas like, it's got to be you. And when Judas left to go perform what Satan would have for him to do, they're like, well, he took some money and go get, went to the poor people. Judas was so with the 12, I mean, no one knew who that person was at that table that night. Now here he is. The Bible says he went to his own place. So if he went to his own place, where would that be? Wouldn't that be in the ground? And here he comes out of the earth. That would be kind of strange is they went around the table and they all asked Jesus, is it me, Lord? Is it me? They didn't know. Had no idea. And here he comes. Judas has been dead. Now he's coming out of the ground. Now you got Lazarus. And you remember what happened with, you remember what happened with Lazarus? You remember what happened to all the people around Israel with Lazarus coming out of that too? They started believing Jesus and they were going to kill Lazarus. Well, up pops this man. If it, like I said, if it's Judas, wow! And I bet you he would have a revelation of Jesus Christ that's not real. And he, the false prophet, exercises all power of the first beast, the Antichrist, before him. And causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. This guy is going to come up and say, this is your master. This is your God. And they're going to follow him. And he doeth great wonders. Didn't Jesus do great wonders? And he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Now Jesus did not do that. James and John said, Lord, won't we call down fire to destroy? He's like, you guys don't know what spirit. See, Jesus knew that this false prophet would be calling fire down. See, you just had Moses and Elijah doing their work for 42 months, making water to blood and, and, and everything. And he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll show you something. I'll show you something with Elijah. I'll call fire down. Problem. And I think I, I have to check. But I think that was Elisha that did that. The 152 men. It may have been Elijah. I always get Elijah and Elisha mixed up. But he's calling down fire. I don't think that's one of the plagues that Moses did in Egypt. Now there was fire and lightning bolts running along the sky, but had fire come down? Do you realize all that's happened so far, and now he's calling fire down? I'd be like, wait a minute, no, cut it out. We've got enough stuff coming from Earth. we got enough stuff coming out of the out of the heavens in the sight of men you got you got to have a magic show for the kitties hocus pocus cock of the duke is here comes farm whoa our 400 prophets in our old testament couldn't do that but elijah could after he soaked the offering with water He's imitating Elijah. And the people fall for it. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth. By the means of those miracles. Pentecostal. Which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. So he's going to work a circus act. Of gimmicks and magic and all that so the people can go ooh ah fire don't the Chinese have fireworks when they got the dragon there you go there you go he's gonna have fireworks in the sight of men and they're gonna bring their lawn chairs and sit out there but he won't have a barge he won't have Things to light, it'll be just okay. Let there be fire. Means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast 
which had the wound by the sword and did live. All right, ladies and gentlemen, ta-da, boom, wow, oh, ooh, we're so great, you're so wonderful. All right, I want you guys to make an image to this bee. Yes, master, yes, we'll make you an image all so much. Give us some more shows, play some music. Let's have a 4th of July fireworks show so great. Make the image. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Uh-oh. And this is not Robotronics. This is not a, a voice recorder. This is not no recording device. This object of metal, wood, or, or whatever it is made of gives life. And Nebuchadnezzar, when he says, when you hear the music, the sap book, when you hear the band play for the fireworks show, you better fall down and worship my golden image. And if you don't, Shadrach, Meshach, and go, you're going into the fiery furnace. And when all the world bent down for Nebuchadnezzar's music band in the golden image, guess who was left standing to be seen by the king and everybody? Like, hey, there are three people standing. We've got a problem. Everybody else is kneeling down. Everybody else is on their faces worse. They're not. They're seen. They become a sore thumb. He gave life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, before we move to the last three verses, let's let's look at something here for a minute. We are under the law. We've got raiment of Jews. They are have a great testimony, chapter twelve, chapter eleven, and they have Jesus Christ as their testimony. The law and the testimony of Jesus Christ, the gospel. They are called saints. Their second commandment says, you're not to have idolatrous worship. Now, let me ask you a question. Let me state a statement or whatever. All the world is in awe of this image and the beast. How are you going to know the most dedicated Jews that they love God and Jesus Christ? All right, it's time for the music. Put the quarter in. Da, 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 da. Why, are you, why are you standing? Because the law says we're not supposed to, aha, uh -huh, mark that person. He's following the law. Don't you know the tribulation period? You are saved by grace alone, minus the law. You hypocrite, you follow. There's no more law. That was the church age. You are teaching false doctrine. You are going against us. And the beast, the image, will speak. That person over there. It's right. You're getting hotter. You're getting hot. Right there. That one right there is not worshiping me. It's not Satan. It's not the Antichrist. It's not the false prophet. The image is telling them who's not worshiping him. You're not going to come up with a computer system that's going to beat this. I've seen, the, I've seen the program. I've seen the videos, the movies, how you're going to beat the Antichrist. You can't beat him with this image that's going to say, I have not been worshipped. I'm offended. Kill him. And all the world's not going to care. Image, we worship image on our money every day long. We worship presidents and we worship people's pictures on the walls. Yeah. You realize with that case with Haman, he had, he's the second ruler of the entire nation. And one person would not bow down before him and that made him angry. He's been invited into the king's house to have a private dinner with the king and the queen. And hey, great and all that. The best food. He leaves and he doesn't get bowed down before. And that angers him to build. So when you read Esther, you are seeing the Antichrist. 
And the Jews do get the victory in the end of that book. Not Haman. He gets crafted on his own device. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm a Gentile. I'm going to, I'm going to live through the tribulation period. Are you mean to tell me that you're going to give your life up because you won't worship the image in the beast? Really? After all the things you give up God on, to go fishing on a Sunday, to go to the movie, to, you know, whatever you do, you give up to serve on God, to do whatever you want to do. And then in the tribulation period, you're going to give up this so you can really. After you've watched hundreds of people get slaughtered, you're going to say, hey, I'm going to do it right. No, I don't think so. No Gentile is going to stick up for the law. That's the Jewish people. And then during this time, remember Jesus said, there are people who are going to help those Jews. They're going to be in prison, but you visit them. They're going to be injured. You help them. They're going to need a place to stay, and you provide. They're going to need food. You feed them. That's me. Yep, that's going to be me in the tribulation period. And they say, Jesus, yes, sir. When did we feed you? When did we visit you? When did we take care of you? We had no idea what we did. So there are people right now we're reading about in this period. They are helping the Jews, and they don't even know what they're doing. And the whole rest of the world that's going to help the Antichrist to get rid of these Jews are going to go in the lake of fire. The sheep that help the nation of Israel and the goats that do not. Because if you help these people who won't worship the image, you, you now are spotted. You are now hated. And he calls all. Did I read 15? I'm going to read 15 again. And he had the power to give life under the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would worship the image of the beast should be killed. Death sentence. Not worship. The image of the beast shall be killed. I mean, of all the crimes going on, that's the one crime in the world now. You may rape, murder, kill, steal, embezzle. Are you worshiping my image? Yeah, I'm worshiping. Okay, you're a good boy. And he caused all, except for the saints, the raiment, both small and great, little and big, rich and poor. Oh, there are rich people in the tribulation. There are poor people in the tribulation. There's no middle class, though. Rich and poor. You're either rich or you're poor. And James gives us an entire book about rich in the tribulation period. It's not right. The only way you get rich in the tribulation period is you're working with Satan. We'll see that in a minute. Free and bond. Oh, no. There's slavery and bond servants in the tribulation period. There are free men and there are bond men. There are slaves or there are no slaves. To receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. A mark. That is your, people say, your UPC mark. We can't go more than that. But there will be identification on your hand or your forehead that I serve and worship the beast. That no man might buy. There's the poor people. You can't go to your store and buy anything. So some people are going to help that help those Jews because they can't because they won't get that mark. You know what another law says for the Jews? They're not to print any marks on their body. That's in the law. You notice how this nation has become a tattooed nation? Jews are not to be tattooed. That's the law. N might buy or sell. Well, that's how you get rich. You got to receive that mark to sell. And that's how you make a profit. And the people you sell to have got to have that mark. 
So it's like a secret organization. If you belong to this club, we'll take care of you. Now, what were the things like that? We used to have a record and tape club when I grew up. You could get reduced cassette tapes at a price if you had their club membership. If you weren't part of the club, you couldn't do it. You got stores today, unless you join that store and have an ID card, you can't go in there and shop. All you can do is look around. These big stores like that, the bulk stores, are setting you up for the Antichrist. If you don't have that plastic card, you can't do much business today. So, buy or sell. Save he that had the mark. There's that mark. Or the name of the beast. Or the number of his name. Now, it looks like there's a mark. Or there is his name. Or there is his number. Or possibly all three are the same. But you've got to have a mark by Satan. We just had 144,000 marked on their foreheads. So let's go with the tread. America loves treads. If Jericho was like America, Israel would have had a big hard time when they came in. Because if they was saw uh, Rachel with her red string hanging in the window, everybody would have gone out and bought a red string. Well, why are you doing it? I don't know. This all, this all my neighbor was doing it. I bought a red red string because she's doing it. I bought a red because they were three strings for a dollar at the store. This is going to spread around like wildfire. What's that you got in your hand? Well, I got that from the, down from the beast and all that. Isn't it? Yeah, that looks great. Where do I get one? You get one right over there. I'll take you. Come on. Wow, that's cool. What do you mean you ain't got one of these marks? Oh, okay, you got it on your forehead. Wow, that's even better. Wish I got it on my forehead. You see Jim down the street? He ain't got nothing. See, if you don't have with the in crowd... You're going to stand out. It's not peer pressure. It's Satan pressure now. It's life or death. Receive a mark in their right hand or their forehead that no man might buy or sell. You cannot do no business without that mark. You say, well, what about the Jehovah Witnesses? They gathered canned goods. That no man might buy or sell. It's not going to happen. You're not going to survive without that mark. Now, I don't know how it's going to happen, but there's going to be a compensation of everything. that. Oh, we, we got this little cabin out there in the woods, and we got all kinds of food that they feed the astronauts and all that. And we got water. We got stockpile. Water that no man might buy or sell, and the water is going to go to blood. Yeah. And vegetables come in water. Just thinking about that. You're going to open it up and it's going to be dull. Yeah. God said it. You're going to have to live it. He that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. You want to be wise? And this is not for me for the church age. You know, people worry about the mark. Where are we if we're in the church age? Okay, we're in heaven. So this has to be written to somebody. What does it say over here? If any man have ears, let him hear, and hear his wisdom. The people that are remaining, the faithful people. So don't you see that they're, they will open up the New Testament, and they're going to read Revelation, because God says, hey, you got ears? Oh, we better pay attention. Well, I don't, I don't speak Hebrew, but let me say in the Hebrew language. That just happened today. Wisdom. Okay, okay, Jew. listen. Let him that understandeth count the number of the beasts. 
for is a number of a man. And his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Maybe during the tribulation, the men are numbered? Probably numbered, yeah, that's a possibility. And the thing is, here is wisdom. You are to know what this number is. The 144 are running around. They've got marks on their head. You better be able to distinguish between their marks and their forehead that says Jehovah. And you better be able to distinguish between somebody who's going to come to you with a mark on their forehead that says Antichrist. Hey, Antichrist is going to be a Jew. He's going to be a Syrian Jew. And he's not going to be one of the 144,000, but... And I don't understand the Hebrew language. I don't need to understand the Hebrew language because I'm English. I speak one. I press one. I press one. But I do know enough. I've been told that the Hebrew letters represent numbers. And if you were to get yourself a monster kind of drink. And you look at those things that look like three nails. It's supposed to look like nails. Each one of those little nail marks is a Hebrew letter that represents six. So if you get three of those claw marks, six, six, six. Now, let me put a little warning here, Christians. We're not here. We're not involved with this. We are standing before God and Jesus Christ praising them. I don't need to worry about the mark. If Trump or whoever comes to be president in the future stands in this house with, with government rifles said you received this mark for Social Security income by the government, no more will you have to work. But if you want food, you receive this mark. And the rapture hasn't happened yet. For to feed my family, I take the mark. <gasps> I'm not in the tribulation period. And when the rapture does happen, that mark in my clothes and my guts hit the ground. Because we may end up with a government agency that's going to step in and say, the only way you're going to live, the only way you're going to survive is you live by the government and the government 100%. They're already going after a lot of homeless. Yeah. They're putting a chip in them. And Christians will say, by God, I will not do that. I will die. God don't need dead saints. Not especially during that time. He needs people to go out and preach the gospel and you can't do it from the graveyard. You say, you mean you would take a mark? Well, if I became old and Alzheimer's, something like that, and the only way they had a mark in a nursing home, if that would be my thing, was to put it in my forehead or my hand. And if I were to enter the doors and set off alarm that this patient's going to walk out and probably do harm, I take it. I'm not under the, the, it's not Satan doing the marking today. I see everybody, they're making you do this. They're making, it's not Satan. And the power of Romans 13 says you are to obey the government. Now the government came up and said, okay, we are eliminating because of safety and internet fraud. We are eliminating all ID of plastic and all that. And it's going to be in your hand. Now, why would they choose hand? The Bible says. And from now on, all you do is scan your, and that's who you are. There's nothing wrong with that as a Christian. But if you do it in the tribulation period, your soul is damned. You've been warned. And there's only one group of people that cannot worship that image. And there's one group of people by the law says they cannot receive that mark. And Satan does that for only one purpose. I want to identify who you are. Yes. But he doesn't have their birth records no more. There's no one that knows the birth records. 
See, he knew the birth record of Jesus Christ. You notice how all the women in Jesus' line were barren. All the men stepped outside of other wives. Judas stepped out with his daughter-in-law. Satan tried to, but Jesus Christ has been born. He has suffered and died and bled. Satan's like, I just want to get that Jewish race. I want to conquer them for last and final and all. Because all these nations couldn't do it. So I will set up my United Nations. I will set up that one world government. And he fails trying to get rid of those Jews. This is his last attempt to destroy the Jews. And God says, through David, Jacob's trouble, chastising the nation of Israel, thy rod and thy staff shall comfort thee, though they walk through the valley of the shadow of death. This is the valley, valley of the shadow of death for the Jews. Now let's go to Psalms 23, is it? Let's look at that now. It's a cute psalm, but it's not our psalm. Let's watch Psalm 23. I love this psalm, but it's not mine. Doctrinally. Spiritually, I can apply it. I can apply this to the... I preach three of these verses down the street. That's my family. But doctrinally, the Lord is my shepherd. Doesn't Zechariah tell us that there's an idle shepherd? Who's going to have a, a arm and a right eye injury? So you better find out who your shepherd is. The Lord is my shepherd. You better have the Lord for the tribulation rendment. You better have the Lord. And they do. They're saying, I shall not want. What are you going to want? Food. Because I can't receive that mark. Can't worship that image. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Send them off by airline to the wilderness. They were in the desert, and isn't it funny that Jesus told them to make the men sit down on the grass? In the desert? And grass. He leads me by besides He leads me by beside the still waters. The waters in Salem Petra, that's the place. The still waters that were trying to flood them out from Satan. Has now become stilled waters. How's that? He restoreth my soul. Man, their soul has been damned. How many Jews today are not believing on Jesus Christ and going to hell? He leadeth me into the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And the Bible says he prepared a place for her and he flies her off there. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Satan chasing him. I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod, and Satan's called the rod of God. And thy staff, they comfort me. Satan's somehow going to comfort the Jew. Satan's going to make them believe in God even more. And he doesn't even know it. You know, some of the trials and tribulations that Satan puts in your life makes you stronger with God? Thou preparest a table before, before me in the presence of my enemies. Well, guess who the enemies are? Haman, the adversary. Satan, the enemy. Thou anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, right now, Satan's dwelling in it. That's a, verse 6 is a promise of those Jews. Hey, it's not over yet, but wait till the king comes. That Psalm 23 is a tribulation psalm to the Jews. Gentiles in the church saying, oh, that's all for us. That's all for me. You need to worry. No, you don't. You don't need to worry about nothing. So what did Paul tell you to do? 
Pray for the peace in Jerusalem. Well, what is the peace of Jerusalem? Jesus Christ sitting as king when Satan's been bounded up for a thousand years. And at that time, will the nation of Israel in their land totally, fully will get the peace forever. And the Satan gathers up an army and God goes, and they're gone. And then they get the new earth and peace forevermore. Tribulation, I mean, the book of Revelation is, is an interesting book if you study it right. You put it, well, wait, hold on. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing. And if you show that mark and the beast and all that in the church age, you're not rightly dividing. Plain and simple. 